In this video, we will explore power gliders and in particular, electric power gliders. We will investigate how they can be used for transportation of goods at extremely low cost to the remote corners of many countries. It is interesting to note that in the early days of aviation, gliders held a prominent role in transportation. An example of this were military gliders. During World War II, gliders transported troops and heavy equipment to combat zones. They were designed by the US, Germany, Britain, and even the Soviet Union. For takeoff, they were towed in the air by a larger powered aircraft. High altitude sailplanes were even built for reconnaissance such as the DFS-228 but were never flown. A more audacious concept was the Antonov A-40. It was the Soviets' attempt to allow a tank to glide onto a battlefield after being towed aloft by an airplane. It was found to be unworkable, but imagine the formidable sight of a tank landing on a war front. So why can we not look at gliders again? They make the perfect aircraft for mid-mile logistics. After all, there is now technology to power them with lightweight motors and batteries and even with fuel cells. The airframe can be made lighter and stronger using composite materials as compared to wood that was used during the World War II era. They don't need to be towed anymore and can be easily made as self-launching. Using autonomous flying controls, they can be flown without a pilot and carry even more payload. What gives the power gliders the advantage is their high lift-to-drag ratio. This means that for every kilowatt hour of energy spent, the glider is the aircraft that can go the furthest. And it's best illustrated by the range equation for the electric aircraft. The range is equal to the specific energy of the battery pack, which is between 150 to 250 watt hour per kilogram, times the propulsive efficiency, times the inverse of acceleration due to gravity, times the lift to drag ratio, times the battery mass fraction of the aircraft. Now you can see from the equation that the lift to drag ratio has a lot of bearing on the range of an aircraft. For extreme performance gliders, the lift to drag ratios of over 50 have been recorded, but even for most gliders, finding lift to drag ratio of over 30 is common. For large cargo gliders using modern design techniques, the lift to drag ratio of 20 is doable. Even the VACO CG4 military glider with very boxy fuselage and low aspect ratio wings had the lift to drag ratio of 15. It is true that gliders are fair weather aircraft, but there are many regions across the globe that are dominated by high pressure for most part of the year. For example, the regions above and below the intertropical convergence zone. In the recent past, we have witnessed powered gliders completing coast to coast journeys across the US, Australia, and Europe. They move slowly through the air. The never exceed speed for most is about 100 miles per hour or less, although some gliders can go up to 180 miles per hour. For middle mile logistics, that is transporting goods from warehouse to warehouse or port to warehouse, powered gliders can play an important role. These gliders would be large in size, such as the ones used by the military. Solar panels on the gliders can enhance the range. Note that the state-of-the-art high-efficiency thin-film solar cells can provide over 852 watts of power for just one kilogram of added weight. Solar-powered gliders in the past have achieved high endurance with much heavier monocrystalline silicon solar cells that provided just 372 watts per kilogram. These lower power density solar cells have been used by aircraft like the Solar Impulse, Sunseeker 1, the Sunseeker Duo, and the Solar Stratos. If the state-of-the-art solar cells, which are the multi-junction solar cells, are used, then it can generate 6.4 kilowatts instead of 5 kilowatts, and this would further increase the range. These solar cells are used mostly in satellites. 
Even at present, the Sunseeker Duo has an endurance of more than 12 hours. It has a L by D ratio of 38. A modified version of the Duo with more room and with autonomous flying capability can easily transport goods of up to 200 kilograms to distances of up to 300 miles. Larger gliders can also be built that can be assisted in takeoff with aircraft catapults on the launch site. These aircraft may not be suitable to fly over large built-up areas, but think of the sub-Saharan Africa where there are no proper roads between population centers. There are mostly dirt tracks which get muddy during the rainy season. Likewise, there are areas where the distance might be small, but the terrain is difficult. The cargo gliders can therefore be used in these situations, dropping loads via parachute. At present, Zipline, a delivery company, uses fixed-wing drones to provide payload deliveries of up to 1.8 kilograms. On peak charge, their drones can fly distances of up to 300 kilometers, but the maximum distance they can deliver has been limited to 80 kilometers to complete the round trip and have some reserve capacity. The Zipline drones use a launch catapult for takeoff and a sophisticated catch fire system to land over a soft landing pad. This means that the energy required for takeoff and landing the drones doesn't come from the onboard battery. Similarly, cargo gliders can be assisted in takeoff and landing. There are different ways of attaching propellers to the gliders which give them the ability to self-launch and sustain flight. The Sunseeker Duo had a propeller at the empennage, but most self-powered gliders use retractable pylon-mounted propeller that is nestled in the fuselage just behind the cockpit. It folds out when required and folds back in when not in use. There are some powered gliders that use front electric sustainers or FES for short. The front configuration is aerodynamically more clean compared to typical retractable pylon configuration as there is no additional drag of a pylon, so lower power is required for equal performance. The propellers in the FES neatly fold back into the grooves in the fuselage when not in use. The disadvantage of the FES is that the propeller diameter is limited to the landing gear height. Larger propellers can be attached at the rear, like in the Sunseeker 1. Another configuration that can be explored for cargo gliders is the tandem wing configuration. This was first used by the solar glider called Areol, which took its first flight in 2016. This aircraft uses an interesting hybrid power system where part of the power comes from solar cells, part comes from hydrogen fuel cells, and some comes from biojet fuel that is derived from algae. This aircraft has already done an 8-hour flight and has reached an altitude of 7,040 feet. The aircraft was designed by Rafael Dinelli, who has ambitions to cross the Atlantic with this plane. The tandem wing configuration allows more area for the solar cells. Since its inception, the aerial has had design modifications. Struts were added between the lower front wing and the upper rear wing to stiffen the two light independent structures. The aerial 2 design that was revealed in a video shows an extended end plate from the lower wing attached to the upper wing. This makes it a box wing configuration. A box wing also allows for high aspect ratio of the wings and ensures greater structural integrity. Furthermore, the Aerial 2 has also got distributed propulsion. It has four propellers instead of a single large propeller that was used by its predecessor. Another example of how effective the solar tandem wing configuration is comes in the form of the Solar X1 drone. This drone has a 12-hour endurance and a range of 600 kilometers. So clearly there is an opportunity to develop solar cargo gliders. There are many design templates that can be followed, including a box wing configuration. These gliders would be sustainable, noiseless, and would be able to deliver cargo at extremely low cost to distances 
of 100 to 300 miles. And with this, the video is concluded. If you learned something from it, then please do give it a thumbs up. Thank you for your attention.